Hello, and welcome back to Watercolor 101 Part 2. In this video, we're going to be going over some basic watercolor techniques and experiments to get you used to your supplies and used to watercolor techniques that you'll use very often in your painting practice. Now, a lot of these techniques are not specific to watercolor, but I'm showing you them in watercolor because there is a difference between the way that watercolorists will use these techniques versus an oil or acrylic or gouache painter. So the first thing that we're gonna learn about is just basic paint application techniques. So the first one I think should be fairly simple for you guys to understand. It's the one that you'll use probably the most, and that is the wet on dry. So what that means, wet on dry means, well, exactly like it says, uh, wet on dry. So it means that you're putting wet paint, like this pile of paint here, and you're putting it on dry paper. And that is how you'll paint most of the time. It's the technique that I use 99% of the time in my paintings. The next technique is called dry brush. Now dry brush is when you take some paint, and here I'm just taking straight from the pan here. I'm gonna go ahead and blot my brush until it's pretty much, doesn't have a lot of paint in it. Now dry brush technique can also be used with paint that is straight out of a tube. But since I'm using a pan, I'm just using it straight out of the pan, trying to get it really sticky, like barely wet, and then taking quite a bit off of my brush. And then I'm just gonna go straight onto the paper. Now dry brush can be great for texture, things like brick on a building, grass, uh, tree trunks, leaves, all kinds of stuff. I don't typically use this technique very much, um, but I know people that do, and some people do whole paintings in dry brush. So now for wet and wet. So I'm gonna go ahead and wet my brush and just wet a small area here. An important thing to keep in mind when painting in watercolor is that because water is your vehicle for your pigment, for your paint and your colors and everything, it will seek its own. So water will always be drawn to water. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this kind of rusty red mixture I have here, and I'm gonna drop it right on this, this wet area. And look what that does. I'll put some little, little blotches here. So you can see immediately how that paint immediately starts like spreading out and starts sprawling out in that water. Now it doesn't move super far on this paper, but if I add a little more water to the bottom part here and kind of push it, push it with some water, you can see how that kind of moves. It flows really nicely and I can kind of manipulate it just by manipulating the water around it. Wet and wet techniques are fantastic for things like backgrounds, skies. Um, I've even used them for foliage as well, like um, bunches of leaves or um, grass and things like that and then maybe you want to dry brush on top of that. So it's an extremely helpful tool. The next thing that I want to explain here are blooms. So a bloom happens when you have some paint and I will grab this piece of paper real quick. So say that this is a nice wet area. I've got this nice and wet. And then I'm going to pick up that purple again, that violet. And I'm going to just touch my brush to the paper. See what happens? See how that paint splurts out and expands and spreads itself out? That is called a bloom. So the difference between a bloom and just wet and wet is that wet and wet refers to that the surface is wet and the paint is wet, where a bloom basically is the result that you can get with wet and wet. So see, I can even bloom this out more taking some clear water and just touching the middle of it. You can see how that is like breaking it up even more. So I have a couple little dry examples here that I'll pull up for you. So you can see, especially here, I put some black paint in some yellow. You can see how that kind of bloomed and made some green. Uh, this blue made some beautiful edges and some lighter parts with texture 
This guy really blended some colors. You can see some gorgeous, gorgeous texture in there. This guy had a bunch of brighter colors, a lot you know, more vibrant. So blooms can be used, they're quite unpredictable. It's very hard to control them, but they can be extremely beautiful. And I think that's one thing that really speaks to me about watercolor is the fact that it is so unpredictable and can create these wonderful, wonderful things. The next thing that I wanna show you is glazing. So we'll, we'll learn about washes here in a minute, but I'm gonna cover glazing first because it's a nice introduction to that. So here I have three little spots of dry color. And what I'm gonna do is take a very light paint. So it's very watered down. This little guy here, I'm watering down this, this purple over here. It's gonna be very watery, so it's gonna be a very transparent stroke. And I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go right over this dry area with this transparent, very light paint. And what that does is create what we call a glaze. So when you glaze, what you're doing is you're putting a light wash or mark or brush stroke basically over another color. And this color can be solid, it can be a bloom, it can be uh, you know, anything, but that's what a glaze is. And I'll show you another one here with a little more paint. Glazes are extremely helpful, especially for painting, you know, portraits, skies you can glaze a lot in, buildings to get shadows, clothing to get the effect of fabric, the folds of a fabric, you can glaze a lot in that. So glazes are a technique that is pretty easy to learn, but also just really important for your watercolor practice because you'll use this all of the time. And what it does too is it'll add another dimension to the color underneath it. So you see this blue I had here, I put some purple on top of it and it creates this really nice icy cool color that could be used as a really nice shadow, um, maybe in some snow or something. This red color that I put over this kind of dusky purpley color um, would be another really nice shadow or adding some warmth to it. And this green, this yellow green over this red creates a nice almost orangey tone. So say that I had, you know, very warm sunlight from like a sunset coming in, you know, that would be a really nice color to use for that. So I'm gonna use a couple other techniques to show you. So I'm gonna take some clear water and we're gonna do another bloom. So this that I just showed you a few minutes ago is what I like to call a spot bloom. I've heard people call it a speckling bloom and some other things too, but I call it a spot bloom because all I'm doing is taking a color, using the tip of my brush and just putting a little spot. Now what you can also do is maybe take a little bit of thicker paint Take some excess paint off your brush, use your finger and flick it, and you can create some wet and wet speckles or speckle bloom. And these can be really fun to play with backgrounds because they add so much interest and they're just a lot of fun to do. <laughs> you see that kind of good everywhere. And then the final technique that I wanna show you out of this group is blotting. So say that I have this really thick paint, you know, very, not so much water, just this nice color here. And say that I wanna lighten it or adjust it a little bit. What I can do is take a paper towel and I can roll it up, I could put it on my finger, I could bunch it up, I could put it on the tip of a pencil, you know, um, there are multiple things that you can do with this. And I'm just gonna go ahead and pick up some of that paint. I'm just gonna let that paper towel absorb it. And see, I can almost kind of draw with it a little bit. And what that does is all, all it is literally just picking up some paint. And depending on the pigment that you're using, the specific color that you're using and type of watercolor that you're using, um, some colors will lift really well and some won't. Another thing that I can do is actually just wet this paper towel just a little bit 
and then go back in and, and suck up more of that paint. Look at that. I can lift almost to white with this color. So those are several techniques that will be extremely helpful for you in your watercolor practice. And you can interchange these and mix these in any combination that you want to get the effect that you want. So the next thing that we're going to look at is the wash. Now washes are extremely important in watercolor and you will use them in just about every painting. So to give you a definition of what a wash is, a wash is basically a sheet or area of solid smooth color. Now these can vary, you can see I have some that aren't so smooth, they have some different colors in them, ones that fade, that's called a gradient wash. So let me show you how to do those. Now for this, I'm not gonna use the same brush. I'm gonna go ahead and grab my quill brush. And the reason that I want my quill brush is because this brush holds a ton more water. So when you're doing washes, you want to have brushes that hold a lot of water because that's gonna help you accomplish your wash. I'm gonna go ahead and grab this blue. I'm gonna really juice this brush up. I'm gonna go over here to my wash and I have my paper slightly tilted. In fact, it should not be tilted that direction. So you can see that I have this little bead of paint here. So what I wanna do is I actually wanna keep that bead and follow that bead all the way down, all the way down to the end of my wash and voila. So the colors that I mixed in here are granulates. So you'll see this separate a little bit. The next wash I want to show you is a gradient wash. And this will be a little harder with this brush, but a gradient wash goes from like the darkest color to lighter color. And you can even fade it out all the way to the white of the paper if you want to. So we're just going to do the first line in blue, get that bead going there. I'm going to take away some of my paint and put some water in my brush, go back to that bead, take it down another line, wipe my brush off, get some more water, some clear water, go back to my bead, do another line, do the same thing, keep adding water till I get to the bottom. These can be beautiful for skies, or other backgrounds, especially like in this case, I had several pigments in here that are kind of separating. You can get some beautiful, beautiful granulation effects um, using gradient washes. So here we have our flat wash and our gradient wash. Another type of wash is a multicolor wash. So a multicolor wash basically goes from one color to another. And I'm gonna go ahead and use the same blue violet mixture that I have. Gotta refill my brush. And what I'm gonna do is as I get down here, I'm gonna start grabbing another color. And I'm gonna mix that color in. See how that transitions really smoothly? I'm gonna pick up more of this, this red color, pick up that bead and go down. I'm gonna go past my line a little bit. Look at that. So there I have two colors and you can make this granulation change from this color to this color as smooth or as you know short abrupt as you want in this case i did like one stroke of a mixed color and then went to the red um, but you can also just continually mix in your first color with the second color and then put more of your pure second color towards the bottom and get some different different variations of this wash but this can also be really nice for skies and landscapes because you could even make a whole wash of your entire painting and have your foreground this like say this red color is like a mountain or field you can have that go into green have your blue and green you know ready to go another type of wash that's here that's dried is what i like to call a bloomed wash so what this is is the multicolor wash but instead of just letting it dry like that what i did is i actually took a clean brush with clean water and dabbed in clean water into that wet paint all around to get that bloomed effect and you can see how really pretty this texture is and you know, you can use this for all kinds of things. So the last thing I wanna show you for washes is how to do washes around objects. 
And um, you're gonna use this probably a lot in paintings, no matter what painting you do. Um, in a lot of my pet portraits, you'll see me do my final backgrounds as a wash. Um, and I have to go around all the, the ears, the head, the fur, you know, and everything and do my wash around it. So I'm gonna show you that on a much simpler scale. And I'm gonna go ahead and use the same red color and blend this in. So here I have this little random, almost keyhole, sideways keyhole shaped object. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my brush that's loaded with paint. I'm gonna start my wash, see my bead. I'm gonna take that bead and I'm gonna gently go around my shape, drag my bead with me. The bead must always be there. Grab some more paint because it's getting a little dry here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and keep dragging my bead. I'm gonna tilt my paper a little bit. This paper is resisting because I touched it with my finger. There we go. So I'm gonna to continue to take that bead. I'm tilting my paper in the direction that I want the bead to go. I can go ahead and I can touch up a little bit of that, that's fine. I'm gonna keep tilting my paper to the direction of my bead. Not drop, <laughs> not drop my paper here. And then I'm gonna go ahead, keep tilting, keep tilting. I'm gonna go all the way around this object. And I can fill in a little bit more. So that was a little bumpy, but <laughs> that's how you do it. Basically, what you wanna remember is to keep your bead with you, with your brush. And as that bead depletes, grab more paint. You can blot it in, take your bead and drag it. And that's how you get more of the smoother, smoother wash effects. So just to reiterate, when you're starting and your paper's flat, this is your bead. This little pool of paint is your bead. As you tilt the paper, you'll see that it starts to condense to the bottom. So what you wanna do is take that bead and start dragging it. And if you feel like you don't have enough paint, go ahead and drag that. And with this brush, it really kind of mops around because uh, this, this is holding a lot of paint right now. But that is how you do a wash. So I hope that this has helped you kind of get a feel for some basic watercolor techniques. I highly recommend that you take some scrap paper or a scrap sketchbook um, with some watercolor paper and practice these washes. You can see that I've done a ton of these more um, gradient washes because I like them and different versions of them, different you know streaky colors and smoother colors and just have some fun with it. Even just taking, you know, scrap pieces of watercolor paper like this and just practicing how water moves and how your paint moves on your paper is going to be extremely helpful for you. Every paper reacts differently to every paint and every brush and, you know, any combination of materials. For example, this is the Canson student grade paper and this paper acts a lot differently than my artist paper does and the notebook here that i was using today is another canson it's the canson montreal sketchbook um, and this paper acts a lot more differently than this paper you can see how it's it really granulates and settles the paint settles in the texture of the paper where this one's really smooth but you know play with what you have because you know your combination of supplies will do different things than what i've just showed you and the more that you know about your materials and how to use them, the better your paintings will be. So I hope that was helpful for you guys. If you enjoyed, please leave a like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and stay tuned for the next couple videos in this series. And as always guys, thank you so much for watching.